In this video here, we're going to be looking at trig angles, and we'll start with reciprocal trig identities, which we've talked before, but in this case, we're going to show you another way to interpret cosecant, secant, and cotangent that might be helpful when you're evaluating. So for cosecant, we've talked about it being the reciprocal of sine, and one way you can show this or write this is to have it as 1 over sine theta. Um, so we've talked about cosecant looking like 1 over y, the y being the um, part of the unit circle and y also connecting to sine. So in, if that's the case, we can also write cosecant as 1 over sine. And then for, co for secant, we can write it as 1 over cosine. And then for cotangent, it's 1 over tangent. And this can be helpful later on when we're evaluating, and I'll show you um, later in this video. So um, let's first kind of brush up on our skills for evaluating with the unit circle. So we've learned last week that the unit circle provides us values that is helpful for evaluating trig functions. So in this case here, we have sine pi, and this is our angle that we have, which is pi. So we go to pi, and sine is always the y value of the coordinate. So my y value here is zero when it's at pi. So I'm gonna put in zero for sine. Now for cotangent, that is the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent's y over x, so cotangent's x over y. So in this case, I go to pi, I already been to pi, um, and I have to get my x, which in this case is negative one over my y, which is zero. Now, anytime I have zero in the bottom, that's when this whole thing goes to being undefined. So we can't divide by zero, so this is undefined. And that's it. So we're, the goal is to try to figure out, okay, at that angle, what is the x and y value? What's the coordinate? Um, and then this cosine here, um, cosine is related to the x value. And because the angle is a negative angle, instead of going counterclockwise in the positive direction, we're going to go counterclockwise in the negative direction. So if this is 0 and I want to go to 150, well, this is 90. Here would be negative 90. If I go another um, about, let's see, 60 degrees more in the negative direction, that would get me to 210. So this would also be equivalent to negative 150 for 210. So that there is my x and y value, and I just need the x value for cosine. So this will be, let's see, negative root 3 over 2 for my cosine value. For tangent, we have 120, and it is positive, so we're going to go in the positive direction. So here is 120, and my x and y value are right here. So for tangent, it is y over x, and so I have root 3 over 2. That's my y value, and my x value is negative 1 half. So when I'm working out this problem, I'm going to need to divide fractions. So that's where we take the denominator and we flip it and multiply straight across. So this is two over one now. And if I multiply, I can see that the twos cancel out, leaving me with root three over one if I multiply straight across. Now doing that, I notice that roots three over one is just root three. And so tangent of 120 degrees is just root three. And I'm done. Oh, I think I dropped a negative sign, my bad. I think you guys probably saw that. I dropped a negative sign. There we go. All right, now I'm done. For example two, it wants us to do the same thing, but we are using a calculator to evaluate the trig functions. So this is where you want to grab your GeoGebra um, scientific calculator, or if you have a TI-84, that's great. Now I'm going to show you how to use GeoGebra um, since that one is just using your MacBook. All right. So what we need to do is plug in these trig values into GeoGebra. So I'm going to switch my camera here. So we're going to look at this problem where we need to find sine, 
negative 2 pi. To do that, we're going to be using GeoGebra, as you can see here. Um, feel free to type this into Google search, and you should be able to find this scientific calculator. And so to type this in, you have to make sure that your setting, so if you click on the spinning wheel or settings, make sure the angle is in radians because we have negative 2 pi, and that's radians. And so then you'll click back to settings and type in your equation. So when you click on this, the keyboard should pop up and we're going to put in sine negative 2 pi. And so there is my value. Um, so for sine negative 2 pi, the value is 0. And so I'm going to go back and put that in. For secant, I'm going to go ahead and work this out. Um, but one of the things I want to mention is that secant, there's no button on the calculator for secant. So what you have to do is write this as 1 over cosine, because secant is a reciprocal of cosine, and then write in 235 degrees, and then type this in the calculator. So if you were to put that in the calculator, let's see what we get. All right, so I want to first start with going to settings and make sure that the angle is changed to degrees um, and not in radians. So make sure you go back to settings. And now I'm going to type in 1 over, I'll use this fraction button here to make it a fraction, and then cosine over 235 degrees. And there is my value in... Um, uh, degrees, so negative 1.7434. I'm going to round it to four decimal places. So um, in this case, let's see here. Let me write that down before I forget. This is negative 1.44734 as four decimal places. And then I would just go ahead and do the next one here. Um, so for co um, cosecant here, this is in also in degrees, so I need to write this as 1 over um, sine in order to represent cosecant. Um, and this would be 320 degrees. And so 1 over sine is cosecant. And I'm going to just type this into the calculator and see what I get. So if I go ahead and do that, this would be 1 over sine, and it was 320. And it's already in degrees, so that's good. And that is my value, negative 1.5557. So let's write that down, negative 1.5557. And last but not least, this one's cotangent, so that is the reciprocal of tangent. So I'll write it in the identity form and put in 11 pi over 4. So 11 pi over 4 is in radians. So we're going to go ahead and switch that to um, radians on the calculator. So remember, go back to your settings and then hit degrees, radians, and then go back to the mainframe. So we're going to type in our equation as 1 over tangent. Now we need a fraction inside because we have the, um, the 11 pi. So this is 11 pi fraction over 4. And then it looks like I get this kind of a weird answer right here. Um, it says 1, negative 1 over 1. But if we think about that value, that's just negative 1. So when cotangent is 11 pi over 4, we just get negative 1. And that's it. The reason why sometimes we use a calculator and sometimes we use a unit circle to find our trig values is just because sometimes you can't use the unit circle to find the, the angle that you're given. Like for instance, the secant one here, I have it at 235. But if you look at the, the unit circle, you can see that there is no 235 here. 235 would be between 225 and 240. So the unit circle doesn't exist that value. So it's easier to use the um, calculators to figure out that value 
when the um, unit or the angle is not on the unit circle. All right, getting into um, trig inverses here. So this part will help you out with your projects. Trig Inverse trigs help you find angles generally. And so this is the idea that if you have a, let's say a sine value, um, you can cancel out the sine by putting a, the inverse sine next to it. And so this helps cancel it out, leaving just the angle um, that is inside. So the angle comes out. Now I want to mention that this is used for um, solving like algebraic equations. Um, and I'll show you later how it's used. But for most cases, if you're given a trig value and you were asked to figure out the solution, in this case, the variable here is representing the angle. So the solution here is representing um, the angle. Let me write that here. So solution is two angles that give you that trig value. So what you can do is use the unit circle for most cases um, and the angle you need to provide as a degree and also as radians and they have to be within these boundaries. So the degree has to be from zero to 360 and the radians need to be from zero to two pi. Um, and you can't use a calculator for this part. So let's practice without using a calculator first. So uh, for part A, this one is asking us to do um, sine of one half. So for sine of one half, if you look at the unit circle, um, it's a positive one half and sine is associated to the y value. Let me write that here. So if sine's connected to the y value, let's look for positive um, y values that are a half. So all the positive y values are up here. And I can see that there's one right here. Um, so this here is a positive y value and then there's one right here. So that means the two angles that work here is 30 degrees and 150 degrees and nowhere else because that's the only places you can get a positive one half for y's. Notice that down here, um, they're all negative one halves for y. So going back to that problem, I'm going to use the angles that I found, which was 30 degrees. and 150, and I also need to write it in radians, so make sure you go back and look and see what it is in radians. So it was pi over six for 30 degrees, and five pi over six for 150, and there you go. So I'm just gonna be looking at the unit circle to help me figure out where all these trig identities are. Um, so this one is secant here, and so secant's a little bit tricky, but let's remember that secant is one over x. It is a reciprocal of cosine. If that's the case, if I want the reciprocal, all I have to do is really just think about where cosine lies, right? Because cosine is my x value. So I really wanna just figure out where does cosine is on the unit circle. If I were to do that, I would just take this um, fraction here and flip it and do three over two root three since secant is a reciprocal of cosine, so I can just go ahead and flip that and try to find um, cosine. So um, then I could try to simplify this, so I need to get the root off the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, or sorry, multiply by the root. This here would end up being three root three over two times, well, root three times root three is gonna give me three but then the threes on the top and bottom cancel. And this gives me root three over two. Now this looks familiar. This is somewhere on the um, unit circle. And remember, this is equivalent to cosine and cosine is equivalent to the x value. So I'm gonna be looking for an x value that's root three over two. And if you look on the unit circle, um, I'll just draw a unit circle here just to kind of show you guys. Um, but root three over two is located in 30 degrees as root three over two and one half. And so um, another place that it is positive root three over two is in the fourth quadrant. 
because that's where x's are positive as root 3 over 2, and negative 1 half for y. Now, for this angle here, it is going to be, um, let's see, that is going to be 330 degrees. So there are two places that this angle works. Um, for degrees, it is 30 degrees and 330 degrees. For the radians, if you were to convert them or just look back at the unit circle, it's pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And there we have it. Our angles in degrees. Last one here is tangent. So for tangent, you have negative root 3. So in this case, tangent um, is my y over x. So I have to think about what could have been my y and what could have been my x that gave me negative root 3. So let's take a look at our unit circle here. Um, I want you to notice that this radical that we have does not, is not in a fraction. So something had to cancel out in order for it to be like that. Um, if we go to the unit circle here, and if we know that tangent is y on top and x on bottom, then perhaps the thing that would have worked to try to cancel something out um, is not, so it can't be the 45 degree angles because if I were to take tangent of that and divide, since root two over two is for both x and y, it would just give me a tangent value of one. Um, for the one I have, I have a negative root three. So it has to be either a 30 degree or 60 degree angle, that, like one of these coordinates. But it's a negative root 3, so I know it's either the um, second quadrant because they have one negative, or it's the fourth quadrant. So it's one of these two now. So when I'm looking at it, perhaps it's um, something like this, where it's negative 1 half for x and negative root 3, four, 3 over 2. So let's try something like that. So what I'm going to do is put in a negative sign, and um, this would be negative root 3 over 2 for my y value and 1 half for my x value. And so if I were to work this out, this would be negative root 3 over 2 times 1 half. And so this here would cancel out the 2s. And I'm left with negative root 3 over 1, which is also negative root 3. So this works. That means that I need to make sure my y values root 3 over 2 and my x values 1 half. But because this is a negative, that means it's either in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant. So um, the angle that gave me this here was, if I kind of draw a unit circle to help us out visualize, was 120 on this side for the second quadrant. It was negative 1 half and root 3 over 2 for my x and y. And the only angle that kind of looks like this but has one of them negative is down in the fourth quadrant, which is, um, in this case, 1 half for x and negative root 3 over 2 for y and it sits at 300 degrees. So these are the two angles that work. So I'm gonna write that down as degrees. So 120 and 30 degrees. Or you can say that this is in radians, which is two pi over three and 11, sorry, not 11, five pi over three. And there we go. All right, last concept that I want to go over here is um, how to use the calculator to figure out the two solutions or the angles. Now, this time you're only going to need it in degrees. I just want us to practice it in degrees because this will be helpful for the project um, and understanding how to do that. So I'm going to show you how you can find the angle, just like what we did here. Um, but we're not going to use the unit circle this time. You can use the unit circle for this case. Um, but I want to show you how to use the calculator 
because you'll need to use the calculator for your project. And I also just want to show you how you do it algebraically instead of using a um, unit circle. So like I said before, if I want to try to treat this angle like a variable, I need to cancel out or get rid of the sign here. And the only way to do that is to take a inverse sign. So if I use an inverse sign on this, this will help me cancel out the inverse and the sign, leaving me with just the, um, the angle that's inside. So let me just reshow that. So if I put sign and then um, inverse of sign, and then the sign is inside. But anything we do to one side, we have to do it to the other side. So I have to take the inverse of sign also on the right side of the negative one half. So like I said before, this part cancels, the inverse and the sign cancel, leaving you with just theta. And then we have to figure out what's the inverse sign of negative one half. And this is something you wanna plug into a calculator um, like GeoGebra here. So going back to GeoGebra here, make sure you change it to degrees so that way you're getting your answer in degrees. And what you have to do to get an inverse um, sign is when you click on it, so you're gonna click on sign, but you're also gonna click on, um, so if you click between the sign here, you need to put the inverse right there. And so to do that, we can click on, um, I think it's this button. Yeah. So this button right here, there's a negative one as an exponent right here. So we're going to click on that and it should make it appear as sign inverse. And now we can um, type in our, let's see if I can grab my mouse here, um, type in our value that's supposed to be inside. So that's negative one half. So negative one over two, and there we have it. So sine at negative one over two for the inverse is negative 30 degrees. So I'm gonna pause right there. So writing this out as negative 30 degrees, um, the problem with this answer is that it's not between zero and 360. So these are only positive numbers and this is a negative number. So it's out of bound. So what we have to do is try to figure out what positive um, or, or what we call standard position. So standard position refers to as the positive values um, on a unit circle. So those are the numbers, the angles between zero and 360. So let's just draw a picture here to try to understand what's happening. So if I were to draw a coordinate system, negative 30 degrees is right here. And so we have to think about what angles are also right there at negative 30 degrees. Um, and in that case, if we look at our unit circle, let me see if I can move this somewhere else. There we go. If we look at our unit circle, negative 30 degrees is about equivalent to right about here. So that's equivalent to 330 degrees, um, which is equivalent to this, um, this coordinate here. So the goal is to look at the uh, sign value. So the sign value here is negative one half. Is there anywhere else on the coordinate system where sign is negative one half? So take a look. So sign is referred to as the y value, which is negative one half. So it is that value at 330. So I know that could be an angle. But another place that it's also negative one half is going to be down here in the third quadrant where the y's are also negative, and it is 210. 210 is also where y is um, negative one half, so that's 210. So these are the two angles that I need. I don't wanna pick any angles up here because those are where the y's are positive. So that is going to be my answer. So this one did not, um, was close to it, but it was negative 30 degrees, so we couldn't use that. We have to make sure it's in standard position or um, as a positive angle between zero and 360. 
So my answer is going to be 210 and 330 degrees. All right, so I can do the other ones also in the calculator, just like what I did before. Um, so to try to get this angle by itself, I need to start with trying to cancel out the cosine. And to do that, I'll use the inverse cosine. And I need to use it for both sides. So um, the cosine theta is inside on the left and root two over two is on the right. So again, cosine the inverse and the cosine cancel leaving you with just theta. And then I have to figure out what's the inverse cosine of root two over two. And so I'll go ahead and do that in the calculator like I did before and I end up getting 45 degrees. So this time I got lucky and I just get the, um, a positive angle, which is good. So I have to go back to the unit um, circle to see where else it could also be 45 degrees or um, where else could it also be root two over two for cosine. So cosine is associated to the, um, the x values. So let's see where else it could also be positive root two over two. So we saw it could be that in the 45 degree angle in the first quadrant, which is true, there's the x value, it's root two over two. Um, but it could also, x could also be positive in the um, fourth quadrant. So notice that at 315 degrees, it is also root two over two for x and it's positive. So those are gonna be my two angles that work here. Um, so if I go back to this problem, so angle 45 degrees works, but also angle 315 works as well. So I'm using the calculator to figure out um, what angle works and then I also have to you know account that there could be a, a second angle that works because generally the unit circle produces two answers that work for that particular spot um, or so for this particular x value. So for tangent I'm going to try to get the angle by itself by using the inverse tangent on both sides. And so tangent will go inside here and root three over two will be on this side. So these cancel out. So I'm left with theta. And then I need to figure out what inverse of tangent root three over two is. So if I were to do that on the calculator here, um, how about I just show you how to do that on GeoGebra just in case you guys are curious. All right, so the first thing we need to do is make sure our settings is in degrees, which I think mine already is. Yep, and so then from there, I need to go back and type in tangent. So I'm gonna go to tangent there. And then you wanna click in front of the parentheses. There we go. So that way you can fit in the inverse that goes in front of it. Let's see if it will focus, there we go. And then inside here, if you click inside the parentheses, we need that fraction that has root three over three. So we're gonna click on the fraction first. And so now I have the fraction inside, but I need the root three. So typing that in, and then in the bottom here, I need to put three, so root three over three. And then there it is, my tangent value in degrees, which is 30 degrees, that's a very clean answer. Um, and that is within our boundaries of zero to 360. So I can use that tangent value now we also know that there is a second angle here. So if you take a look at where 30 degrees is on the unit circle, um, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for us to see. Um, so 30 degrees is somewhere in the first quadrant here. And that's where you get the coordinate root three over two and one half positive. And tangent is associated to the y over x value. So this is my x, this is my y. So if I take you know, one half and I divide it by um, root three over two, 
then I get root 3 over 3 is what it's saying. So I need to find some other place that has the same coordinate but also needs to be positive for both coordinates to make this happen. So the only angle that does that is when they're both negative and you divide, which is in the third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, there's an angle where um, is 300, about 30 degrees also from the, um, the x-axis. So that one there is at 210 degrees, and that's where the coordinate is negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So if I were to take my y and divide it by my x, I would also get a positive value, and it would also be root 3 over 3. So in this case here, my angle is going to be 30 degrees and 210. All right, I know this video was kind of long, so that's it for the journal 10 part one. In the next video, I'll show you how to do um, the coordinate system and also looking at um, re reference angles. That's it guys, bye.